Well gamers, the day has finally come and that new GPU we're all waiting for is finally... What? It's an Intel card. Not, 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 not that one? No. Okay. Okay, so maybe the Intel Arc B570 isn't the most exciting GPU on the market. But seeing as neither Nvidia or AMD have announced any products that are going to compete in the entry level market, Intel has seemingly made it its mission to capture these budget gamers. And with no reference design to speak of, that leaves the door wide open for third party board manufacturers. The first card we're going to take a look at is the Sparkle Arc B570 Guardian OC. This card sports a 160 megahertz overclock, is 24 centimeters long, weighs 788 grams, and is 45 millimeters wide, which is just over two slots. And as for power, both of these cards use a single 8-pin connector. The other card we're looking at is the ASRock Arc B570 Challenger OC. This card comes with a similar two-fan design with a 100 megahertz overclock. This card is a little bit longer than the Sparkle at 25 centimeters, weighs a little bit less at 720, and is a little bit thinner at 40 millimeters wide. This card does have LED lights, but there is a physical toggle switch if you want to disable them. Moving on to our test system, we're now using an AMD Ryzen 7 9800X 3D paired with an MSI X870E Carbon, running 32 gigabytes of Thermaltake Tough XG memory at 6200 megahertz, while running the latest drivers from Intel on Windows 11. And taking a look at the 1080p results, and we can see that both cards are a little bit faster than the outgoing Arc A770. While the current flagship for Intel, the B580, is about 14% faster. The ASRock and the Sparkle produce the same level of performance despite the small on paper advantage of the Sparkle, and we found that both cards boosted their clock speeds past their rated amounts and in the end are effectively the same. Moving over into ray tracing and at 1080p, both cards produce a like-for-like -like experience to the RX 6700 XT and a similar performance to the RX 3060 but that does mean the ARC A770 is 10% faster, while the B580 is 27% faster. Boosting the resolution to 1440p doesn't change the results all that much from 1080p, with both cards now being in between the RX 7600 and the RTX 4060, and producing an overall very similar experience to the ARC A770. The ARC B580, on the other hand, does increase its lead slightly and is now 16% faster. If you are looking for a locked 60fps experience at 1440p though, you will need to reduce some settings or enable some upscaling since both cards come in at the same 45.1fps, while even the B580 is only good for 51.7. Bumping up the resolution to 4K does help the B570 compared to its budget competition but none of these cards target 4K. That being said, both B570s are now faster than the RTX 4060 and give the same overall experience as an RX 7600 XT, with the A770 being 3% faster and the B580 being 19% faster. In reality, at the settings we test at, all of these cards are in the range of 30 FPS, so you'll probably need upsampling or much lower quality settings to hit over 60 FPS. So the B570 produces about 15 to 20% less performance than its bigger brother, the B580. So what about power consumption? Well, then it really shouldn't surprise you that it uses 15 to 20% less power to do so, using only 155 watts while gaming. And when locked at 60 Hz, it does use a little bit less power than the B580, only using 94 watts. This does make it the most efficient card that Intel has yet released, though it still has a ways to go to take the efficiency crown from Nvidia or even AMD. We're most of the way through this video and we have yet to see a meaningful difference between the Sparkle and the ASRock card, but we have finally found that in the form of fan noise. The Sparkle comes in at a respectable 30.3 dBA when loaded, but the ASRock does do substantially better at 
The script does flip though when we normalize for 35 dBA, with the Sparkle Guardian ever so slightly edging out the Azrock Challenger. Quickly touching on overclocking, and a few driver updates from Intel have made this an overall much better experience, and we were able to get an extra 10% performance from both cards, effectively making them the same once again. So both these cards produce the same level of performance, but where do they come in in terms of value? Intel's last card, the B580, was a great deal, assuming you could get it at MSRP. And with no Intel reference design available, both of these cards come just a bit short from taking the performance per dollar crown from the 580 line. That does give them a better value at 1080p than most other cards and roughly the same as the RTX 3070 and a bit less than the RX 6600 XT. But really, the biggest reason not to get a B570 is the B580 at being only $20 more and having better performance. But if you are looking for an entry-level card and can't spare the extra $20, or you can't find the B580 at MSRP, then both the Sparkle Guardian and ASRock Challenger are equally good alternatives.